I'm Tim Collins and I run the DigiVac Company. The DigiVac Company is a company focused on vacuum instrumentation and OEM electronic control. Nothing leaves our shop unless it's calibrated under real vacuum against a NIST standard. This is really important to our quality process. Tom Massey, our production manager and our calibration expert, is going to take you through our calibration process to give you a, a flavor of actually what goes on with calibration of uh, vacuum instrumentation. Hi, my name is Tom Bassey. I'm the production manager here at DigiVac and I'm also the director of the calibration department. Every instrument produced at DigiVac is calibrated under actual vacuum. We'd like to give you an overview of how we do it, the equipment it takes to do that, and the different kinds of calibrations. In order to calibrate our instruments, it takes three vacuum pumps. The first vacuum pump outside behind the wall is a rotary driven oil based pump. Our second pump is a small rough vacuum oil based pump. Our third pump is a high vacuum diffusion pump mounted underneath the table. This vacuum manifold contains 10 ports for calibrating customers' gauges, and we have a wide array of test standards. Now, when we say calibration, what do we mean? Calibration is taking an instrument's readings of known or good correct magnitude and applying those to another instrument of which we're unsure of the readings. DigiVac maintains several standards which are NIST traceable. My Convectron gauge is an ultra-low vacuum gauge. It's good down to 10 to the negative third. We use this for readings between negative third and one tor. Our Baritron gauge is used for readings from one tor up to atmosphere, generally presumed to be about 760 tor in any given day. And of course, our third instrument we use is a voltmeter. It's a common voltmeter, but it's been calibrated to a NIST traceable standard. In doing this, it takes all three of these instruments to calibrate the majority of our vacuum gauges. Uh, in this instance, we're going to take one of our new 200 Pirani gauges and apply a good calibration. The first step in calibrating our model 200 Pirani is to set the excitation current or the current through the sensor. We do that using a Fluke 87V voltmeter, which is a properly calibrated instrument. And we are looking for approximately 52 to 53 milliamps. 0.052 in a voltmeter equals 52 milliamps. The next step, remove our voltmeter, and we want to do a zero. The range of calibration on this instrument is from 1 to 2,000 millitor. Looking at our 375 Convectron, we are going to make the zero on our 200 Pirani match the Convectron. Turn the adjustment counterclockwise on a zero potentiometer until our reading matches zero, or as close as we can get on our first run. For this run, we'll stop our manifold and we'll bring the pressure, again using the Convectron, up to 1,000 millitor. Backfilling our manifold with dry nitrogen and approaching 1,000 millitor, so we're at 1,010 millitor, we can now set the span on our 200 Pirani. So we want to make the Pirani instrument read as close to 1,020, now indicated on a 375, as possible. 1,018, that's acceptable. We're now going to reduce the pressure and take readings down. 504, 495, close. 168, 165, close. Now we're going to reduce the pressure all the way again to zero and do a double check of our bottom end. Bottom end is zero. We'll bring the zero up. See where we're at. Zero. Stop our manifold. Bleed in dry nitrogen. And take some readings on the way up. 28, 28, 1050, 1053. This instrument is properly calibrated and ready to make it to our shipping department.
we're going to give a demonstration of how to calibrate one of our A to 1W vacuum gauges. Again, every instrument produced by Digivac is calibrated under actual vacuum. We will need our vacuum system and our two test standards, a Convectron and a Baritron, to calibrate our A to 1W. Our A to 1W instrument is ready under vacuum. We can see it, it's given a good reading. It has two active set points, but of course, it's not properly calibrated compared to the reading on our Convectron. Our first step, once the instrument is plugged in, warmed up, and stabilized, is to stop our vacuum system and purge the system using dry nitrogen to approximately 600 torr. The 600 torr reading will be indicated by our baritron when it reads 600.0. Now we can calibrate our A1W at any pressure higher than 500 torr. We certainly do not want to calibrate at atmosphere because atmospheric number changes on any given day. For good practice, we like to use 600. We'll approach that. Six hundred and three torr. Acceptable place to take a reading. Using the span adjustment on our A1W. We're going to increase the potentiometer clockwise so our A1W reads right on a threshold of 600 torr. Baritron reads 602, A1W reads 600. That's a good start. Energize our roughing pump, pump our system down to the lowest achievable vacuum. Here at Digivac, we can hit 10 to the negative third or 1 micron. Any pressure lower than 10 microns is acceptable for calibrating the bottom end of our A1W. Stop our roughing pump. Open our diffusion pump. Watching our 375 Convectron, we would like to see the pressure reach 1 millitor or lower. Pressure is approaching 1 millitor. We're currently at 1.4, 1.3. To make the zero adjustment on our A to 1W, we're going to find a potentiometer in the middle array. This is a zero adjust. And as we hover around zero on our convectron, we're going to reduce the indicator reading on the A to 1W so it is on a threshold of zero and one. Clockwise increases the reading, counterclockwise decreases. We would like to sit right at zero. If the reading is stabilized, we can stop our vacuum system and observe readings on the way up back up to atmosphere. Our convectron indicates approximately 30 millitor, 29. We can introduce more dry nitrogen, 238 millitor, 217 on the A1W, an acceptable reading. We'll look at some higher readings. 4.84 on our Convectron, 4.80 on A1W, excellent reading. Using our Baritron, our absolute pressure Baritron, we observe a reading of 30.5, we're at 25. That is within spec in this instrument. Looking at our Baritron, 155 torr, 100 torr, that's correct. Four hundred and forty torr, three hundred and ninety. Still in spec, a little on the low side. We're going to take another reading at 600 tour. As I suspected, our readings have been a little low. We're going to make a secondary correction on our span using our baritron indicating 600 tour. Increase our gain by turning the atmospheric potentiometer clockwise. 
So we're right on a threshold of 600 tor. And now we're going to run backwards and take some readings decreasing vacuum. 600 tor still 600. 219 tor on our Baratron. 200 tor on our 81W. Getting better. Nineteen and a half torn of Baratron, thirty-four torn eight one W. Looks like we'll make another correction down on the bottom end. To do that, we'll pump our system all the way back down the hard vacuum. Again, using our diffusion pump to achieve one millitor or less. wait for our system to stabilize and we'll make a zero correction. Invectron indicates 2.0. We would like to see one before we make an adjustment. Invectron indicates one. Did you vacate 1W indicates 1. We'll stop our system and we'll take a few more readings, increasing pressure. Approximately 43 millitor, 42. 2.26 tor, 2.69 tor, acceptable. We'll go and look at our high end again and see how well we control up high. Five hundred sixty tor, five hundred forty tor, and my last check for calibration is to vent my system all the way to atmospheric pressure and make sure we're reading approximately seven hundred and forty to seven hundred sixty tor, and we are. This is a properly calibrated Digivac eight hundred one W vacuum gauge. Tom brought you through our calibration process and showed you how we calibrate our Pirani gauge and our eight hundred one VW. Uh, and we feel that's very important to actually calibrate uh, against an NIST standard under real vacuum to maintain our total quality of the instruments that we ship out the door. If you have any questions about calibration, vacuum instrumentation, vacuum level control, or some of the design work we do with OEM electronic control, please feel free to give us a call. We'd love to help.